It's been a while. Thanks for coming back to Coop Corner at Mana Pro Yoke Tube, brought to you by City Yokes, where we've built a community of the coolest chicks and chickens in the city. We're back because we've got some great new information on how to get your backyard chicken flock started, or even add to your feathered family by raising some new chicks. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hunt and peck your way over to subscribe now. You may have noticed that we're missing the eggheads. Don't worry, they're in the incubator right now because the time has almost arrived for them to join our flock here at Coop Corner. As we prepare them to hatch, we want to share not only what we've learned, but what our foremost expert in the field of chickenology has to say about the best ways to pick your chick and raise them to be a healthy and happy member of your family. We've got a lot to discuss, so let's talk to our expert Margaret as she joins us from her family farm where her flock is rocking. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Margaret and I'm coming to you from our family farm and we are going to begin our journey of thinking about and what you need to do to prepare for to hatch your own little chicks. You want to add them to your family, you want to add some to your flock. This is your chance to start from the very beginning. So let's get started. Manapro believes in nurturing life and we are happy to walk you through the egg sighting incubation journey. Please remember you are hatching live animals and they are an investment for years to come. Believe it or not, they can live five to 10 years. Are you ready for that kind of commitment? Also, hatching chicks will not guarantee your female to male split, so you are likely gonna end up with a few of the roosters. Chickens are flock animals, and to be hen happy, they need to be in groups of three or more. Before you begin, do your homework. What do you wanna do with your chicks after they hatch? Give them away or keep them? There are families starting flocks of their own right now, which makes it easier to find a home for some of these hatched chicks. If you wanna start a flock of your own, you need to do a little investigation first. Are you allowed to have chickens wherever you live, whether it's backyard in the city or out on a farm? How many are you allowed? Are roosters allowed? They can be loud. Another thing to remember is that those little chicks grow so fast. Chicks will start in a small brooder, but then they move up to a more secure location by week four. And once they're fully feathered, they can transition outside to the coop. A professional farm tip, make sure that coop is ready to go when you start hatching your eggs because they will roost if it is built. So you've determined you can have little chickens or a full flock. So let's determine what you might wanna do with them once they hatch. Are you looking for fresh eggs, fresh meat, or to control some insects? A few top laying hen breeds include Leggerns, who are not real cold hardy, but do lay quite a few nice light white eggs. Rhode Island Reds are cold hardy and they lay five nice brown eggs a week. Easter Eggers are cold hardy and lay four colored eggs a week. Silkies are also cold hardy, but lay three very small eggs a week. If you're thinking about ducks, you could think about Campbells, Runners, and Buffs. They all lay three to five eggs a week. If you're looking for meat, you need to consider a broiler variety, which include Cornishes, Jersey Giants, and the Breeds. Oh, turkeys, ready for Thanksgiving? Include a giant white, bourbon red, or white Holland. Ducks also include Pekins and Muscovies. For insect control, definitely go with guinea fowl. They're great. Also, where are you gonna get your fertilized eggs? You can choose to incubate your homegrown eggs or use a trusted local mail order hatchery. For homegrown, how do you know that they're fertilized? First, a rooster is essential to this process. And you can use candling to confirm that they are fertilized, which we'll cover in module two. A trusted hatchery should also follow the National Poultry Improvement Plan. We wanna keep the risk of disease as low as you can for your flock, whether you're adding to it or just getting started. For shipped eggs, use a hatchery, such as Hoover's Hatchery, who will offer a wide variety of eggs and breeds. A local hatchery helps reduce travel time and can increase the success of your hatchery. Another professional tip from the farm, fertilized eggs can be kept for a maximum of seven days in a relatively cool room. But remember, refrigerators will keep the eggs way too cold. Also, you wanna store the eggs the wide side up in a cool room, not a refrigerator, in a cool room to ensure that they have a large egg sac to increase the hatchability. All right. We'll begin our next modules by setting up our incubator and seeing what those eggs look like as they develop. 
Now that you've got a better idea of how to decide what kind of bird is best for you, let's talk incubation. Those eggs aren't going to hatch themselves. Just ask our little buddies, the eggheads. Margaret has all the information you need to get them hatched perfectly. Ready? Let's go. Welcome back. I guess you've done your homework and figured out what kind of eggs you want to hatch and you've got your incubator ready to go. In module two, we're going to go through how to set it all up and get ready for those little chicks. Properly setting up your incubator will set you up for a successful hatch. In this module, we're going to discuss the basic incubator controls, external environment concerns, and adjusting the settings for different types of eggs. For our demonstration, we are using the Manapro NurtureRight 360 incubator. This incubator features a 360 degree view of your eggs, so you never miss a moment of the hatch and to make sure they're rolling right along. An automatic egg turner for an effortless process. A digital thermometer and humidity gauge, which easily monitor the internal environment and are easy to calibrate. You may not be using an incubator with all these features and that's okay. Just remember you're replicating an environment that mama hen would have done. Setting up your incubator is crucial for your high hatch rate. So let's review a few of those key features to make sure you're ready and your incubator's ready. You should set this up in a warm room. So think about the temperatures in your house and how cold it might be outside. Above 74 with good airflow is essential. Not drafty or close to vent. So keep that in mind if you're doing this in the winter. It's also wise to keep your incubator off the floor. It increases the oxygen available for the eggs, which is important. Automatic egg turners are handy, but you wanna make sure that the egg tray that will move the eggs is placed properly so that they are rolled slowly. Also, an improperly placed lid can affect the humidity and temperature inside the incubator, so be sure it's locked in place. We have a digital incubator, so we'll show you how to plug it in and start the countdown from day 21, which is the time it takes for a chick to hatch. Also, a professional farm tip, make sure you check your incubator a few days before you put the eggs in to make sure it's properly keeping the temperature and humidity levels where they need to be for your eggs. For the first 18 days, your incubator should maintain a humidity level of approximately 50%, likely more than what your house is. From day 18 to 21, you really need to increase it up to 70%. You will also stop turning the eggs or remove the egg turner if you have one. We'll talk about this again in the next module and why it's so important right before hatch. If you're using an incubator with an automatic egg turner, go ahead and test it a few times with a practice egg to make sure that it's working properly. A pro tip from the farm. If you did a test run for a few days, you're gonna need to reset that timer on a digital incubator like the NurtureRight 360. Now, it's time to place your eggs since you're comfortable with your incubator and you're confident that your setup is complete and working well. Before you set your eggs, we need to check them. If your eggs were shipped, they're gonna need to rest. It was a long journey. They need to be wide side up for six to 12 hours to help them come up to temperature and allow the air sac to fully inflate on the wide end of the egg. This will help increase your hatch rate. Use nest clean eggs or eggs that can be wiped with a dry cloth or napkin but shouldn't be more soiled than that. You don't wanna introduce bacteria and things into your incubator. Check for cracks and any abnormalities as well. You can use a pencil to trace the air sac and monitor the growth at the fat end of the egg. This can be more difficult with darker colored eggs versus lighter eggs. You can also use that pencil to mark an X on one side of the egg and an O on the other. This will help confirm that the eggs are turning properly. This is important, especially if you have an automatic egg turner. Now, you're ready to place your eggs in the incubator. This is it. Be patient. I know you're excited, but be patient. It's gonna take a little bit for the humidity and temperature to get back where they need to be. If you set your eggs in the incubator before noon, consider that day one. If you had to wait till the afternoon or the evening, that's quite all right. That'll just be day zero. Let's review the incubation days and temperature and humidity levels for all the different types of fowl that you may have considered. Please remember, only one type of egg in the incubator at a time. They all have different requirements and you don't want to cross or have different types of eggs in the incubator. Notice the days are a little bit different. Temperatures are about the same, but keep an eye on that humidity level. Thank you for joining us today. In our next module, we'll check in on the progress of our eggs and see what we need to do to get ready for our little peeps. Oh, hey. I was just taking notes on what Margaret had to say, but my handwriting is so bad that I'll have a hard time reading all of this chicken scratch. 
Good thing we've got it on our YouTube channel so I can watch it anytime. Make sure you subscribe because we've got a ton of great information on here. And soon, Margaret will be returning to take us through what's next after the first week of incubation. See you then.